Look what's going on downstairs. You can't see it, but Bob is right near the window. Bob's looking in the window. Can you see him now? Stella, Splash, Simba, Boo, Sammy, Richard, Nancy, Goldie, Ziggy, Ringo, Eva, Hydrox, and Ditto, the Lucky Pharaohs. It's about 9 a.m. and I just put some bird seed out for the birds and the water bowl. I don't know if you could see it. The water bowl looks like it's starting to freeze up here on that top corner. Unless there's something just floating in it, but to me it looked like it was starting to freeze. So I just checked the outlet to make sure the outlet's on. And yes, the outlet is on. So I don't know. I also dipped my finger into the water. The water is really, really cold, but obviously it's not frozen. It is 19 degrees out right now. So maybe the surface of the water will start freezing. I don't know. Uh, it's not supposed to warm up for another few days. I mean, this entire weekend is supposed to be freezing cold and just walking on the snow the snow is like so frozen um in the front yard where i was walking back here it's thawed out a little bit because of the sunshine and the microclimate but i'm gonna go get a pitcher of fresh water and clean this out and refill it and then the animals will have some fresh water to drink because i did check the security camera footage last night and they are drinking from this. I mean, Bob especially comes by a lot. There's also a big orange cat that I've seen come by here. Um, and I've seen a raccoon drink from it. And obviously the birds uh, use it all day. So um, let's deal with this right now. So yes, it was some ice forming because there's the ice on the bottom right now. So it is so cold that even the heated water bowls are freezing. I wanna check my greenhouse to see what's going on in here. I'm not gonna open it. I looked at the uh, temperature sensor and the temperature sensor says it's like 50 degrees where the temperature sensor is and I still have geraniums and they're still in bloom. So that would make me think it is above freezing in the greenhouse, which would be phenomenal considering it's 19 degrees out and it was even colder overnight. So I'm really happy with the current level of insulation and then with the little mini heater that's been on. It's 12.30 p.m. There was just a fight here in Boo's room. I have to check the security camera. Hopefully it picked it up. Boo was resting very peacefully on his bed in his little, you know, fake cat bed. And all of a sudden, Nancy ran into the room and tried to attack him. So I got to see. I got to see what happened. Just like 15, 20 minutes ago, Boo was here on his bed and Nancy was by the window and they were getting along so nicely. I just checked the security camera footage. Let me tell you what happened. So Boo was on the day sofa like he is now. And Nancy came running in the room. And I don't know if it was Nancy or Boo, but somebody was making horrible, nasty cat noises. And she ran into the room. She stopped a few feet away from Boo, like around here. She did not jump on him or anything. She ran in, stopped here. And then I don't know if she left because I started screaming from the other room or what, but then she just turned around and left. So I don't know if she ran in and Boo was the one making the nasty noises or Nancy ran in making the nasty noises because she was trying to scare Boo. I don't know, but she ran off, and now I think what I'm going to do is shut the door to Boo's room for a while, let him relax in peace, and I'm in the middle of editing a video that I would like to post today, and I'm hoping to get it done because I have a lot of other things that I want to do today. So, yeah, I need to concentrate, and Boo does not need Nancy's shenanigans. It's 1.41 p.m. I'm sitting here trying to edit a video and look at what's going on here. So Simba has been pretty much taking a nap in the cat tower on the left. And Nancy just jumped into the cat tower on the right. She did not bother Simba at all. She just wants to sit in the cat tower because she likes being in the cat tower. And I'm not saying anything. Simba started growling and hissing. But if she settles down and she doesn't do anything, then I'm perfectly fine with this. I'm actually very happy about this because this is progress. This is good. If Simba stays there and the two of them can just relax comfortably near each other, then that's really good. The cat towers are 
they're pretty close to each other they're not exactly together um, because there is a platform you see the platform underneath them so they're not exactly together but they are pretty close um, in the past, I have moved them farther apart if I thought maybe Nancy or Richard wanted to go on top of a cat tower. So it'll be interesting to see what happens right now. I'm just going to continue working on my video. I'm not even halfway done with it. And I'm going to keep a, like half of an eye on what's going on up here. Simba has his back to Nancy right now. And I think cats do that to give off and... I am not afraid of you kind of vibe because don't forget cats have amazing hearing so if Nancy was to start like moving towards Simba he'd be able to hear it but I really think that's what cats do because you know Boo does the same thing to Nancy like he turns his back on her I really think that's a power move to be like okay well you're not scaring me it's 1 49 p.m and both cats have been doing very well Simba just started growling again because Nancy started taking a bath. So I guess Simba heard Nancy moving around. So he turned toward her and started growling. The only thing I don't like is that Nancy has been like staring at him. But maybe she's also looking in the other room because it's in the same direction. So I don't know if she's staring at Simba or looking in the other room. The other thing that I was thinking is that you know, when Simba or Boo turn their back to Nancy, I think it's also a signal to her that, you know, they're not interested in attacking her because if they were interested in attacking her, they'd be facing her. When cats don't have an interest in attacking another cat or a person, they'll turn their back. Nancy is the wild card in this situation. I know Simba's not going to attack her, but she could potentially jump up out of the cat tower across the windowsill and at Simba. But you know what? I have my tambourine. It's 2 p.m., and cats are so funny. I like, I'm laughing here because I'm editing a video and Nancy's been, you know, trying to relax. I, I think Nancy wants to take a nap, right? But I'm editing a video and I'm at the part where Nancy's like howling at Boo and, you know, it, it woke her up basically. So then Simba was turning his head and he was like looking at Nancy, like glaring at her. The minute she opened her eyes to look at him, he turned his head the other way. Like, he didn't want Nancy to see that he was looking at Nancy. It was so funny. And then I turned the camera on, and then Simba just left. I think he said he had enough. But Nancy wasn't doing anything. I mean, she was just laying next to him. And not even right next to him. Like, you know, she's a foot or so away. I think it was good. Look what's going on here. Somebody wants to share my chair. Sim has decided he needs to sit next to me or behind me. How you doing, Simba? You want to go in the room on the bed? I just walked into my bedroom to get my phone charger and I saw this. That's Ringo. Ringo's in the bed on top of the armoire. Look at Ringo. I've never seen him up there before. And I just realized that the zoom on my phone, which I am filming this with, is much better than the zoom that was on the camera that I was using. There's Richard. He's on top of the cat tower. And here's Splash. He's on the bed. So Splash is the only member of the Fab Four that's in the bedroom right now with the other cats. I'm going to have to see if I have another charger in Boo's room because... I'm going to freak both Ringo and Richard out if I try to get to the charger on the other side of this room. And I might bring Simba in here to lay in the bed with a splash. Because he has now completely taken over the chair that I've been sitting on and I need to get this video done. Simba, you're going to go on the bed, okay? Here's Simba and Splash on the bed together. Simba's growling a little bit. Richard just jumped off the cat tower. He wants to leave the room. And there's Ringo. Ringo is so happy up there because he gets to look out the window. And he's just happy up high there. Don't forget, Ringo's a very, very shy cat. He's even shyer than Splash. Right, Ringo? Because Splash lets me pet him and Ringo doesn't let me pet him. Ringo and Richard just left the room, probably because they don't like Simba and Splash hissing at them. 
So I just shut the door and now I can plug my camera into the charger here and everyone will be good for a little while. It's 7.48 p.m. I just walked past the room and I saw Nancy looking out of the window like she sees something. So then I looked out the window to see what she was looking at. And I don't know if you could see it, but down here, there's a tail. It's an orange tail. It appears to be the orange cat. And I don't know if it's looking into the downstairs window, like the one that's above the cat tower. Um, I don't know. I'm just about to feed the cats up here their dinner. Oh no, okay, so it's not looking in the window. I don't know if you could see it. It's just looking around. Maybe it's just underneath the solar panels for a little bit of shelter, but it's not raining or snowing or anything. Oh, I know. It's just laying there because there's no snow there. That's why. It's hanging out there because there's no snow or ice in that area because, you know, it's protected from the solar panels. I don't mind if this cat, you know, hangs out there. The other thing I'm going to say is that this cat is not starving for food. This is a very big cat. I believe my neighbors down at the other end of the street are probably feeding it. I mean, I should touch base with them and see um, if this cat is on their radar um, that they recognize it because it has been around a few times now. So I'm cool with it sitting there. Like if it wants to sit there because there's no snow, that's fine. If it wants to talk to the downstairs cats through the window, that's fine. It has uh, water in the water bowl and it's definitely not hungry because it's a big cat. So that's what Nancy's looking at. Boo just ran into the room, jumped up onto the shelf, and I guess he did not see Nancy here. So the two of them are on the shelf. And I know it's dark in here. All right, somebody has to leave because I'm not, we're not doing this, okay? Boo, you want to leave? Who's leaving? Because we're not having a cat fight up here, okay? We're not doing this, okay? So somebody's going to have to leave. Nancy, this is Boo's room. Boo, are you going to eat your dinner? Because we're just about to eat dinner. It's rabbit day, okay? Come on, Boo, it's rabbit day. You can come and eat rabbit, okay? Come on, you don't need to be in here. There's nothing to look at outside. Boo just doesn't want Nancy to be up here. Come on, Boo, let's go. Nancy? This is Boo's room, okay? Nancy, just behave. I'm not going to touch her. I'm not going to pet her. I'm not going to give her any kind of positive reinforcement so she'll think she could then attack Boo or jump on him. Okay. Come on, Boo. Come on, Boo. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, Boo. We're going to eat. Come on. You want crutches? Come on, Boo. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. This is not Nancy's room. You going to go downstairs, Nancy? It's about time to eat. You want to go downstairs? Nancy, let's go downstairs. Let's go downstairs, Nancy. It's time to eat. Show everyone how smart you are by going downstairs right now. Okay, Nancy? This is a test. Nancy, this is a test. How smart are you? I'm saying go downstairs. You going to go downstairs now? Go downstairs, Nancy. It's time to eat. You want dinner? You want crunchies? Nancy, you want crunchies? Come on. Let's go. Come on, Nancy. Nancy saw the tambourine in my hand. There she goes. It is 9.53 p.m. And I'm just about to give the cat some crunchies. There's Boo, Simba, Splash, Stella. Can you see who's in the upper left-hand corner of the screen? That's Nancy. She's been upstairs with the older cats. She's been behaving. I don't want to jinx anything because every time that I say she's been behaving, then she does something and she has to go downstairs. So what I really feel like is that she's trying to learn how to behave around the older cats. Just from me observing her tonight, especially, I mean, she's trying which is good. I mean, she's really trying to get along with everyone and to, you know, just behave herself. And it is a learning process. We have to remember that 
you know, these four, they have their own kind of uh, relationship with each other, but then they also have their own etiquette with each other and their own way of doing things with each other. And, you know, she's an outsider to that because her group, her family, has a completely different etiquette with each other. Like, they have just completely different customs as far as, you know, the cats, the way they interact with each other, what they find acceptable with each other, stuff like that. So she's been observing, and I really feel like she's trying to learn. She wants to fit in with them, and I will give her crunchies. I just hope that she doesn't do anything that's going to upset everyone. Okay, everyone got crunchies. They all got one teaspoon of crunchies. And even Nancy got a teaspoon of crunchies. Do you see her there? She's sitting with her crunchy cup. Her little coffee filter with crunchies. I don't know why she's not eating them. Here, Stella. Oh, Stella moved because Boo's moving his. They slide around on the floor. Nancy's just watching. Eat your crunchies, Nancy. It's her favorite food. I don't know why she's not eating it. If she was downstairs, she'd be devouring them. Okay, Simba's done. Splash is done. Stella's done. and Stella's done and Boo's almost done. All right, you guys want one more? You get two teaspoons each. That's it. Two teaspoons each. They all got their second teaspoon of crunchies. And look at Nancy, can you see her up there? She's eating her crunchies. She got her second teaspoon also. I had to put the coffee filter like closer to her, but she's eating, she's eating with the big cats. They all had their crunchy snack and Nancy's having her crunchy snack. I have this camera on wide angle, so if things look a little weird, that's why, and the cats probably look farther apart from each other than they are. Good job, guys. There's Nancy eating crunchies with the big cats. So not only did Nancy have crunchies with the cats, but she also had a churu. Here are five empty churu packets. And there's Nancy on the other side of the room. Can you see her over there? So I gave the cats churus in kind of like their social order. So Boo likes to get his first. So he got his first. Stella got her second. Simba got his third. Nancy just jumped into the cat tower. So Simba got his third, Splash got his fourth, and then Nancy got hers fifth. So hopefully she understands the uh, hierarchy among the cats. It's 8.50 a.m. And I just heard what sounded like a door slam. And I was like, what could that be? So I came downstairs and there were four cats on top of this cat tower. And I was like, oh, they must be looking at birds. But they weren't. They were looking at a cat. And I think it's Bob. I mean, I could be wrong. There's definitely a cat out there because it ran by. It was waiting by the back door. Now it's drinking some water. It's 10.30 a.m. and I'm outside and I want to take a look at the back of the cat shelter. So here's the back of the cat shelter. What is that, like a new tree growing? See that stick growing straight up? But can you see what's going on? Can you see what's going on in the straw? I'm wondering if someone's been using it because it looks like the straw has been, you know, pressed down where this door opening is. So this is the door opening that has always been in the back of the shelter. This is not a new door opening. And I think that door opening is big enough for even like Bob 
or their bigger cats if they wanted to go in there. And this is the front opening, which I believe is just a little bit smaller. You see how the insulation makes the front opening a little smaller? I don't know if the insulation got moved or what, because I remember the insulation being like even with that piece of wood. I should also mention I just put down a bunch of bird seed and I am in the middle of putting more fresh water into the heated water bowl. I just tried to move that insulation with my hand and it's not going anywhere. So maybe if the weather warms up, we have a nice day. Maybe I could come out with a box cutter and just cut that back a little bit just to make a bit of a larger opening. You know, one of the larger cats could get in there because Bob's a large cat. If Bob wanted to go into that shelter, he might have a problem getting in this front door. And even that uh, orange tabby is quite a large cat. That orange tabby would probably have problems coming into the front door. When I've been looking at the security camera footage, I do see the cats like going into these bushes and then like in the area behind the shelter. So that's why I made a mental note to check the back door of the shelter today. And it's actually so much more accessible now that the tree that used to be behind it is not behind it anymore. See, I have these really tall, um, I forget the name of them, but there's a name for these trees. They're like privacy hedges. And there used to be one right here in this opening behind this doghouse shelter, but it died. And I was keeping it there just for the privacy of it. But when the landscapers did a fall cleanup, they took it out. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't even like specifically tell them to take it out. They just took it out. So um, maybe it's for the best because it is much easier to access the back of this shelter from that side. And all of these trees and bushes, you know, in the winter, they kind of compact. They're not as full as they are during late spring and summer and early fall. So... Um, they do get bigger and it will get more difficult to access the back of that doghouse. So um, from right now, it's a, it's a nice little area for cats to hang out in. It's 11.30 a.m. and here's somebody's on the bed. I just heard a cat disagreement. I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm assuming it came from this room because as I was entering the room, someone jumped down from a cat tower and under the bed. Then I heard hissing coming from under the bed, which means splashes under the bed, along with maybe Richard, maybe Nancy. I think Richard, because Nancy would just stay on the cat tower. There's Splash, and there is what looks like Richard behind those wires. It might be Ringo, but whoever it is, look. There's Richard or Ringo, and there's Splash right next to him. And here's Boo. Boo's in his room. He says he's going to lay in his bed in the sun and be happy. The window's open maybe like a quarter of an inch. He just made himself comfortable. It's 12.26 p.m. and here's Boo. And Nancy was just on the cat tower looking at Boo. And Richard was on the shelf near the window and i heard hissing so i got up from where i was and i walked over here and that's when i saw what was going on um so there was no fighting there was just some hissing i am assuming boo was hissing at nancy because she was like right here on that platform looking at him so he's probably giving her a warning i don't know what would have happened if i didn't like get up and come over here because as soon as nancy and richard saw me they left it looks like they went into my room, so I'm going to check on what's going on in there. And I'm going to shut this window because it is getting cold in this house. Here's Splash and Simba. They're on the bed. Ringo is on the top of the cat tower, which is fine. As soon as he saw me, he jumped down and he's under the bed now. And Richard was looking like he wanted to go into my closet. So I said, I better shut the closet door. And of course, as I'm shutting the closet door, who jumps out of the closet but Nancy. So I made sure the closet doors are shut because I don't need cats rummaging around in there. I don't trust what they're going to do. But anyway, um, Nancy's walking around right now. Here's Splash. Here's Simba. I just put the heat on. So it's a beautiful sunny day. Hopefully things will warm up. It's almost 3 p.m. Look at these two sunbathing beauties on the bed. Simba's using Splash as a pillow.
It's 4.35 p.m. I just came into the room to put fresh water in the water bowls and look at Simba. This is how he's sleeping. He's like half in the bed, half out of the bed. I don't know how he thinks that's comfortable, but I know he's happy because he's always happy when he sleeps like that. It's 8 p.m. I'm just about to feed the cats dinner. Here's Splash. And look at this. I had to look at this cat for a while and figure out who it was. It's Ringo. I thought it was Simba because the last time I looked, Simba and Splash were on the bed together. But it's not Simba, it's Ringo. And I know it's not Richard because Richard just ran down the hall with Nancy. Ringo, you gonna eat dinner? I don't think Ringo's gonna wanna eat. I think he just wants to sleep up there. And here's Ziggy, she's been resting on top of the sofa cushion. And, you know, I'm not gonna disturb her, but I'm gonna walk around the house and announce that it's time for dinner. And that's what made Nancy and Richard run downstairs right now. So we'll see what happens. Let me tell you how smart these cats are. So I am now at the point where all I have to do is walk around the house and announce that it is dinner time and they all come downstairs. So there's little Eva, Nancy, Richard, Sammy, Ziggy, five. And who are we missing? Goldie's in the back room and I did see Ringo a minute ago. Hello, Sammy. Yeah, everyone's down here. So once I started announcing it was dinner time, and what I do is I clap my hands. I don't clap them like applause or anything. I'll clap them almost like I'm clapping along to music. And then I announce it's dinner time. And Ringo got up from the bed, jumped down, and came down here. And Ziggy did the same thing. So that was really good. I don't have to use tambourines, bells, nothing. I just announce it's dinner time and they come downstairs. It's 9 a.m. and Stella's been looking out the window. Look what she's looking at. I think it's Bob. See what a big cat he is? Bob's a big cat. I think Bob's bigger than Stella and Simba and Splash. Oh, he's going underneath. He's gonna go look at the window. Look what's going on downstairs. You can't see it, but Bob is right near the window. Bob's looking in the window. Can you see him now? Someone tried to attack him. Who is that, little Eva? Yeah, that's little Eva. <laughs> well, I think Bob's curious about the other cats. Someone's howling. Oh, it must be Nancy. I think that's Nancy on the upper left. Maybe it's Eva. I don't know. So Bob is a feral cat that my neighbors down the block feed him. And they've a TNR'd him. And I'm assuming that if they were able to socialize him that they would have because they normally place as many cats um, with rescues or adoptions as they can. And I would assume that's why Bob is still living outside. But he definitely enjoys drinking the water out of the heated water bowl. There's Ziggy on top. And that's Ringo. <laughs> so there's five of the cats concerned with the window. Um, I don't know if he's using the shelter. Every time I look at the security camera, I don't see him going in and out of the front door, but maybe he's using the back door. Um, this is a very nice spot on my patio. We know cats love this area on my patio because of its warm microclimate in the winter. Of course, he's going to love having water. I don't put food out for him because the minute I put food out for him, he's going to make this patio his home and he's never going to want to leave it. 
and I have 11 cats inside. I don't need another one outside. And if he makes the patio his home, chances are good he's going to invite his friends. So I'm happy knowing that my neighbors are feeding him and taking care of him. And if you look at him, he's not skinny. He's not starving. So he's definitely getting fed somewhere. So I don't mind if he comes and visits here. Well, there's Goldie now. <laughs> so I'm actually happy that he provides entertainment and distraction for the cats because I was coming down here to put their toys on, but I don't need to do that now because they're more interested in Bob. Here's Boo. Boo's watching Bob. Look at this, look. Look, he's rubbing on the shelter. Maybe he's been sleeping in the shelter. Look at this. Maybe he's claiming it. Well, right now he's warm in the sun, so that's good. One thing that I must say is that I've been looking at the security camera footage and I hardly see raccoons um, coming through the yard anymore. I don't know if it's because of the season or because my neighbors cleaned up their yard. The yard that used to be a wilderness that used to attract all the wildlife. Um, that yard's been cleaned up a lot. And I think that's the yard that put out um, the poison for the mice. A few months ago, I found two mice in my yard that looked like they were poisoned and that's most likely what happened. Maybe because of the lack of mice, there is not as much uh, wildlife going there or it could just be lack of food in general because if they cleaned up the yard, like if you have a yard that's completely overgrown like wilderness and then they completely clean it up, um, there's really not going to be food left for the wildlife there. Maybe that's a good thing. The other thing that I noticed um, when I was outside the other day is in the past, I usually had like a wildlife trail going through the backyard area. And when there's snow, it's like really apparent and it's not there. All I see is like my own footprints from when I was checking the greenhouse. But other than that, there is no wildlife trail. Now, also, it could just be that the wildlife trail um, adjusted itself. Maybe it's going through my neighbor's yard because, you know, a lot of trees were cut down and fencing was removed from their yard. So the wildlife might be going through that yard now. I don't know. I'd have to put more cameras out. Look, he's looking at us now. He probably hears me talking because cats have really good hearing. Here's Simba. There's Boo. So I'm gonna finish getting ready for my day. This is a good distraction for the cats. I do have some of their electronic toys on up here. It's 9.30 a.m. and here's Bob. He's moved over to the back door. I'm not gonna open the back door because I need to get all the cats fed. They need to be brushed and have their breakfast. There he goes. Are you worried about Bob, Richard, or do you want to eat your breakfast? It's 11.45 a.m. and I just came out here to shut off the heater and the Christmas lights. They've been on nonstop for the past several days. At night, it's been getting down to about 15 degrees. And during the day, it's only been getting up to like low 20s. And I'm very happy with how everything is surviving in the greenhouse so far. I mean, look at these geraniums. Look, they're in full bloom and they just keep getting bigger. And the Meyer lemon tree, I've never had so many green leaves on it at this time of year. Usually there's a lot of yellowing. And this is my first year with the banana tree, so I don't know what to expect with this. I'm probably going to take off some of those brown leaves. But as you could see near the bottom, there's new greenery. So I think that's doing good. 
petunias are still in bloom. There's new greenery on the strawberry plants. So this um, spider plant's not doing good up here. I'm gonna move this. I'll move it there. So I still have a green mini rose bush. This is my bay leaf plant, it's still doing good. I actually have a green leaf on my fig tree and there are geraniums on the bottom. They still have some greenery on them. And on the bottom are the calibracoas. They have some greenery, I even see a flower. So considering how cold it has been the past few days, I'm really happy with how the greenhouse insulation has been holding up this year. And I definitely think this little tiny 200 watt heater has been helping where it is. I put it on the floor on a piece of insulation because you know, hot air rises. I figured on the floor, it'll put out hot air. The hot air will rise and help the plants. And of course, during the day right now that it's sunny, it's probably like 55 degrees in here. That's what one of the temperature sensors said. Actually, I moved one of the temperature sensors underneath this table because I figured, oh, it's far away from the heater and the plants and it'll give me like the coolest temperature in here and the sensor that is on the banana tree will give me like a hotter temperature the reading on the temperature sensor on the banana tree is 72 degrees right now so the sun's coming out it's gonna hit the sensor it'll it'll make it a bit hotter but i put it up there just so i have an idea of you know what the temperature is on the banana tree. I don't think anything needs watering. When I touched the soil of the spider plants, the soil was still moist. So I think I'm gonna just take the brown leaves off the banana tree, um, turn the lights and the heater off. I'll just probably put them on the timer right now and then we're good. Here is the area where I normally have a wildlife trail um, leading from here to the back corner of the fence. And I just realized that that is where the landscaper piled up all of my extra flower pots. So let's take a, can we take a walk there? I mean, as you can see, there are some animal tracks here, but not nearly as many as there would be in the past. I mean, there's, there's quite a few here, but not nearly as many. Oh, so this is what they did. Maybe this is why I'm not getting the wildlife in and out through here, which is fine with me. So this is all stuff that used to be just kind of piled near my garden area behind my garage. And um, when I had them clear out that area, this is where they put everything. And it is kind of blocking access to the bottom, which I mean, it's fine with me. Over here, we could see there are quite a few tracks in the snow. There's tracks here in the snow. And then there's tracks here in the snow. Quite a few over here. It's about 12 p.m. and I just put some fresh bird seed out and some water in the heated water bowl. It's about 1.30 p.m. and I just put a runner back in the hallway. We haven't had one here since the fleas a few months ago. So I'm having really mixed emotions about this. First of all, I'm really happy because I really like this runner. I think it looks really nice. I love the color. I love the texture to it. I love that I got it at the Christmas tree shop. I love what I paid for it. It was really inexpensive. I love how long it is. And I just really like the runner. However, I'm having mixed emotions because I don't like cleaning vomit off of runners. And that's the nice thing about not having a runner in this hallway is because if any of the cats vomited in the hallway, it was so much easier to clean up. Here's Boo, he's relaxing in his room. I'm just about to put a rug in his room also. It's been rolled up in the hallway for months now. I'm gonna vacuum the floor, clean it up, and then I'm gonna put the rug uh, in here. I might have to move this day sofa a little bit um, because I think the rug goes under like the front legs of the day sofa. I think that's how I had it, I don't know. I'll have to, have to figure it out, but Boo's not gonna like it because I'm gonna run a vacuum in here. But I need to make room in my storage room downstairs because I'm supposed to be having a new gas meter installed tomorrow. So I need to organize it, clean it up. And I figure if I put some of these rugs around the house, instead of just having them stored in the storage room, that'll help make some space. It's 1.40 p.m. Look at what's going on here. 
there are two cats on the top of this cat tower. I think that's Ringo and Richard, because I know it's not Nancy. Nancy's in the other room. Oh my gosh. Do you see how much smaller these cats are than like Splash or Simba? Simba takes up the entire top of that cat tower because he's such a big cat. Same thing for Splash or Stella or Boo. Even though Ringo's a big cat, he's more lanky. And Richard's one of the bigger cats also. I don't know, maybe Splash and Simba could share it if they're like laying on top of each other like that. I've never seen this before. I've never seen two cats share that like that. Also, so we have Ringo and Richard here on top of the cat tower. Happily watching birds. Look who's on top of the armoire. It's Splash. So Splash is up there. And these two are over here. And here's Stella. She's on the bed. And there's Boo. I was looking for Boo. Uh-oh. Nancy's going to pounce. Nancy, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't even think of jumping on Boo. Do you understand me, Nancy? You want to go downstairs? I can smell that Feel Away Optimum really strong right now. It's plugged into that outlet right there. You want to go downstairs, Nancy? Because that's what's going to happen. Okay? You want to go downstairs and clean with me? We're cleaning and organizing downstairs, okay? Okay? I just pulled the day sofa away from the wall and I cleaned up a ton of cat toys that were behind it. I still have to vacuum back here and I wanna wash the floor. I put the day sofa back in the corner. It was actually moved a little bit out from the corner. And I love this room because it gets so much sunshine in the winter. It is the sunniest room in the house and it stays nice and warm. And I really wish I could use this room, but to be honest, I am afraid of using this room because every single time that I have used this room for myself, it was originally meant to be my home office. Every single time that I move into this room to use it for a specific purpose for myself, it ends up nursing a sick cat. Or in the case of the Lucky Seven, it ends up nursing seven cats because we have to remember they were all TNR'd and then released into this room and they all went through their recovery from their surgery in this room. And Ditto uh, was in this room twice, first for his recovery for his leg issue and then he was in this room for his cancer issue and Boo was in this room for his teeth issue. And then prior to that, you know, he was in this room when he was on quarantine and, and first becoming a house cat and recovering from his leg injury and being trained and socialized. And, you know, whenever I have any kind of sick cat or end up rescuing a cat, this is the room that they're nursed in. And it's always, it's always, always, always after I use this room for myself because I'm always forced to like move everything out that I just moved into it. And I'm not going to do it anymore. I refuse. I'm like afraid to use this room. The only thing that I would like to use this room for is like a little reading nook because this is such a comfortable day sofa. And because it gets such nice sun, I would really like to make this area a little reading nook. I am going to put my little side table back and I'm going to keep some books on it. So when I want to come in here and read, I can. But even with that, I'm nervous that if I do that, then I'm going to end up with a sick cat in this room. I don't know why it is like that. I just moved Boo's bed onto this desk. It's kind of like under this money tree, but the cats love laying under Christmas trees. So I thought, well, maybe they'll like laying in it here. It's almost like laying under a Christmas tree. Here we go again. So I'm trying to put the rug on the floor. Boo came running into the room, did not see Nancy until he jumped up by the window. At which case Nancy started howling at Boo. He's hissing and growling at her. So there's a bit of a standoff right now. Okay, everybody, come on. Come on. Come on, Boo, over here. Over here. Where are you going? Want to go downstairs? Come on. 
You can all be looking out the window if you get along, okay? If everyone gets along, you can look out the window together. I don't trust either of them right now. Okay. All right, come on, Boo. Come on, you want to help me? Boo, you want to help me put the rug? Here's the rug. I'm trying to put it underneath the day sofa. Come on. Come and help me, Boo. Come on, you can help me. Come on. The rug is in the room. Nancy is underneath the day sofa. Boo's still by the window. I'm going to vacuum. Maybe she'll run out. It's 3 p.m., and the cats have a new play rug. They haven't had one in several months because of the flea situation. And this one was rolled up, and it's still wanting to stay rolled up. So I have things in, like, every corner of it to hold it down. You can see in the middle there's, you know, you could see where it wants to just roll itself up. So hopefully over time it'll just flatten itself out. And there's a pile of cat toys over there that I'll have to go through later. I'm still working in the storage room, but making progress. Here's Boo. He's in his room. He's very happy. He has a new rug. I'm going to shut the window because it's cold in here. It's open a little bit more than an inch, but it's really cold out. It's 4.22 p.m. Look at what's going on here. I can't believe my eyes. So Richard is on top of the cat tower. Ringo is on top of the armoire. Look who's on top of the armoire with Ringo. Splash is in the bed. I have not heard any growling, hissing, fighting, nothing. But of course, I've been downstairs also, so I can't hear anything from down there. But look at this. Look at this. Obviously, Splash can't get down if he wants to. I mean, he, he could make a flying leap from up there to the bed, although not really, because there's Stella on the far corner of the bed, and that's where the cat's land when they jump. It's 6.30 p.m. There's Eva. That's her favorite afternoon spot, right, Eva? And she's been watching me clean out this back room of the basement here. So I organized the storage room. It really didn't need to be cleaned. It just needed to be organized. And I cleaned and organized the laundry room, which I haven't done since like before the fleas because it, it just exploded when I was doing a million loads of laundry a day. There was just stuff everywhere. So I put whatever I could into storage tubs in the storage room. My storage room is like full. I really should not be putting any anything else in that storage room. I mean, it's not like full, full, but it's as it's as full as I would want it to be because I still want to be able to like, you know, comfortably walk around, be able to like reach uh, the gas meter, the um, sprinkler controller and the furnace, the hot water heater. You know, I need to leave a good amount of space around those things. So um, that's what's going on in there. And then this back room here, which I'm standing in now, I have so much stuff in this room just stored that I need to go through. So I've been going through some of it, getting rid of what I can, but some other stuff, like it's documents that need to be scanned and it's just other stuff that needs to be scanned and gone through. It's, you know, stuff you accumulate over years and um, that kind of stuff. So Eva's been watching me. I've been uh, watching some vlogs on my phone as I go through everything. And Eva's been watching me. And let me show you what I just made for the cats. I just made a really long hidey hole for them. So what happens is whenever someone new comes into the house, the lucky ferals hide. And they hide in places where they could like squash themselves. Like they don't hide under a chair or like under Boo's day bed, like somewhere easy to hide. They hide somewhere difficult to hide. So I made this hidey hole for them. It's really long. A lot of them could fit in here if they need to. So I hope they use it instead of hiding behind the stereo system that I have back here. 
uh, or wherever else they smash themselves into. This is where the Lucky Seven has been hiding when people are in the house. I pulled out my old stereo system from like the 90s and it's like one of those large stereo rack systems and this is all the stuff that was behind it and tons of cat fur. I'm cleaning it up now and you know I still have these really large speakers and I think this might have been on the back of uh, this like rack system. Um, I don't know but uh, yeah I'm gonna devise a way to give them more room back there even if I have to pull it out from the wall a little bit just to give them some more room so that they don't um, like try to destroy it. The issue that I have with this like rack system is that it's really unstable right now. It's stable now because I shut the front door on it. It has like a glass front to it. But um, when the front door is open, it's really wobbly. I'm afraid it's going to collapse. And I normally have a Techniques turntable on top of it. And that's a very heavy turntable on top of it. So I'm kind of afraid that this whole thing's just going to collapse on them, which I don't want because this is really heavy equipment. I don't think there's a way to quickly reinforce that because I don't know how it's put together. I don't think it's like Ikea. Like with Ikea, you can just tighten screws and it's reinforced. Um, so I'm going to have to look into that. Meanwhile, I'm going to like clean this entire area out for them. I took everything out of this and it did have some screws and thankfully I did not need an Allen wrench. I only needed a large Phillips head screwdriver. So I was able to tighten this up. So now it's going to be much safer for the cats to be behind it. And I also removed all of the wires from all of the various components. I have no idea how I'm going to like reattach everything if I want to use this. But for now, it's going to be safer for the cat. So I'm going to put all the wires into like a large Ziploc bag and I'm going to dust all these components and put them back in the rack. It's 715. Look who's on the stairs. It's Stella. Is she going to come down and help me? I'm still cleaning down here. Come on, Stella. Come on down. Stella, come help me. Stella, come on down and help me. She was on the steps and she's looking around like, what is going on down here? I don't know who's upstairs, but hopefully there won't be any fights. Oh, she's hissing at somebody. Stella, come here. Come here, Stella. The only cat down here is Goldie and she's asleep in a bed. Come on, Stella. This is what I did with the stereo system. So instead of putting this next to the wall, the speakers are next to the wall. And this, you know, is, I don't know, six inches away from the wall. And I put a blanket on the bottom and I did not put any of the wires back in here. So what the cats do is they come up here and then they just jump down. So this will give them something soft to land on. And a lot of cats could fit down there because they all squish together. So if they need to, this could easily hold several cats. It is 9.40 p.m. All the cats are down here. They had their dinner. And it looks like they ate most of it. It was homemade turkey. And then Nancy was crying for crunchy. So look what I gave her. This is the cat it, I think it's like a tree, cat it tree or something like that. And what you do is you put crunchies in the top, then the cats have to get the crunchies out. I guess Nancy doesn't want to work for her crunchies either. That or she hasn't figured it out. Oh, there she goes. She's putting her paw in there. Oh, there she goes. She got them. Okay, so there's no reason for her to be crying at the door. She has all the crunchies she could eat in this thing right now. I mean, I didn't give like her all she could eat, but there's like a good tablespoon of crunchies in there. So I know Nancy knows how to use it. Does anybody else know how to use it? You guys know how to use it? I still want to clean up more down here, but I am in the middle of cleaning up like my dining room area because I work from my dining room table, so it's a complete mess. So I've been straightening that up. 
I don't know, it's probably going to take me another 20 or 30 minutes to put everything back. And then I want to come down here and finish the back room. The back room is about half done. I don't think I'm going to be able to do the whole thing. I just want to straighten up the other half so it looks a little more presentable. Okay, Nancy, you good? Get your crunchies. There's crunchies in there. You could get your crunchies yourself, okay? It's almost 11 p.m. and the cats love the new rugs. They're so happy to have a play rug back, even though they did enjoy like not having a rug here for a little while. They're so happy to be laying on this rug again. And I put some of their toys on it and they've been enjoying the rug in Boo's room and the rug in the hallway, so they're really happy. They're about to have some crunchies on their new rug. So here's Stella, Splash, Simba, and Boo. And Nancy was behind me, I don't know where she went. The Fab Four are eating their crunchies. They get one teaspoon. When they're done with one teaspoon, they get their second teaspoon. And there's Nancy, she wanted me to move it back a little bit. She didn't want to be too close to the other cats. It's 11.25 p.m. I just came upstairs after finishing up downstairs. I gave them a snack. I gave them some canned food. They have crunchies in that crunchy tree. Shut the door to the kitchen. The next thing I know, Nancy is crying at the door. So I open the door to see what's going on. She flies upstairs and she walks through the kitchen, comes straight to Boo's room, and she did what she does before. She like went to attack him she like charged him and then she stopped like two feet away now i don't know if she stopped when she was two feet away because boo was hissing and growling or because i was yelling something stopped her so then she ran out of this room to the dining room where splash is laying on the floor ran up to splash i thought she was going to attack splash at which point i grabbed my tambourine and started shaking it so she ran into the kitchen because the door was shut i opened the door she ran downstairs I don't know what gets into her because it was not too long ago that she was peacefully eating crunchies with the other cats up here. There were no problems. Then all of a sudden, she gets something in her mind and she has to like try to attack them. I don't know what that's about, Boo. Boo says he's not happy with that. It's 9 a.m. Good morning. I just came downstairs, and it looks like there's still some crunchies in that crunchy tree. Let's put all the lights on. So today's supposed to be yucky weather, like rain and sleet and slush. Got to clean up all of these plates. I'm checking on the back room, and it looks so much better than it did I'm so happy that I got to organize some things. I mean, there's still more work that needs to be done back here, but the cats have a lot of play space on the floor right now. I used to have an area rug here, but I'm not going to put that back just yet. It's just easier to have like these mats from Sharon. And I moved a scratching post back here and they have some toys back here. Of course, they have their cat tower and their window that they like to look out of, and they have their hidey holes. What I decided to do last night was actually move this speaker away from the wall. Originally, I had both speakers next to the wall, and if the cats wanted to get down there, they'd have to jump on top of a speaker and then jump down into the hole. Then I was like, well, why don't I just move one of these away from the wall? That way, they could just scoot themselves behind it. So here's the cat tower, and if they go to the back of the cat tower, they could scoot themselves behind the stereo unit, and hopefully they'll do that. Of course, they also have this really long hidey hole that I made them, and yesterday, Sammy was in it, Ziggy was in it, so a few of the different cats were in that hidey hole. So hopefully they'll use that. I'm just trying to give them comfortable places to hide if they need to. Hello, Ziggy. Hello, Ziggy. Hello, Ziggy. Hello, Ziggy. Hello, Ziggy. So I have not received any confirmation that someone is actually coming to replace the gas meter today, even though they're supposed to. Uh, the time window is between 12 noon and 4 p.m., but I need to make sure everything is ready before that because sometimes people show up early. Right, Ziggy? 
Right, Ziggy? So I want to get the cats fed this morning. And then I'm going to do their litter and their water. I usually wait till the afternoon to do the litter and the water, but today I'm going to do it after they eat their breakfast. That way I don't have to deal with anything later if it takes a while. I don't know how long it takes to put a new gas meter in. Like, I don't know if it's going to be an easy thing where they're in and out in 30 minutes or, you know, if it's going to take them hours. Like, I don't know. There's Nancy. She's looking out of the window. So it's supposed to be a little bit warmer today and we're supposed to get some rain. So hopefully all of the ice and the snow will melt. Right, Ziggy? Because we hate ice and snow. We hate it. It's 10.15 a.m. And I'm just about to start scooping litter boxes. And I saw this. That's Nancy and Boo. They're just sitting here in the play rug together. Nancy's wagging her tail, so that's not a good sign. It means she's agitated. She's crying. Baby Boo's keeping her in her place, making sure she behaves. She's crying and he's growling. I'm just gonna scoop litter boxes. Oh, she's gonna retreat? Look at this. Is she gonna leave? Or is this a fake out? Is she gonna leave or is this a fake out? For some reason, Boo does not want to go in his room today. He's been so happy in his room on the day sofa, but today he doesn't want to be in his room. Maybe he likes the new rug. Look at what's going on in here. So that's Richard on top of the cat tower, and that's Simba on top of the armoire. <laughs> Simba's so funny. He's not completely happy right now, but he's adjusting. The younger cats want to be friends with the older cats. And the older cats are still trying to, you know, protect themselves. Five minutes later, and I'm scooping the litter boxes up here. All of a sudden, Nancy runs into this room, charges at Boo. Now he growled, hissed at her, and put his claws out. And I just happened to see it happen. So Nancy backed away really fast. She ran under my bed. Who's guarding his snake? I bought that snake for the cats when I was buying Christmas presents. And it was a dog toy. I was buying some Christmas presents for dogs at the time. And I saw it and I was like, I think the cats would like it. And sure enough, Boo has taken to this snake. It's 11.38 a.m. Here's Boo. He has not moved. He just wants to lay by the snake. And there's Nancy. She's like obsessed with Boo. Her tail's going. Boo's growling. If she wants to lay there and look at Boo, I'm okay with that. And Boo, you know, he's so vain. He doesn't mind that either. 
He likes it when the ladies look at him. I mean, his back is completely to Nancy. He turned his head and everything. She's not going to try anything while I'm standing here. If I leave, that's when she's probably going to make her move. It's 12 p.m. and all I hear is a bunch of growling and hissing. It's coming from Boo. He moved away from the snake. Now Nancy's walking up and down the hallway. The guy's here to change the meter and I'm just checking on the cats. So there's a tail and it looks like they go underneath the stereo system, not just behind it, but underneath it. Is anyone in here? I can't see if anyone's in this hidey hole that I made. It's too dark. I made them nice hidey holes and they're all hiding in the bookshelf. There's Ziggy. <laughs> Ziggy, you could come out now, okay? They're gone. Come on out, Ziggy. Look at Goldie. She's on the top shelf. And there's Sammy. Come on out, Sammy. Come on out. It's 2.53 p.m. and here's Splash. I just got home. I had to run out to the post office. And I let all the cats be together except for Boo because Boo's in his room and no one else was in his room with him. So I just shut the door. Simba is in the dining room and here's Splash and Stella's in a cat bed in this room also. And there's Stella. And before I left, I checked under the bed and a few members of the Lucky Seven were under the bed. So I didn't want to shut this door and I didn't want to cause a big commotion and you know, make everyone go downstairs. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make a run for it. I'm just going to go to the post office and come back and hopefully nothing bad will happen. So it looks like that was the case. It looks like everyone was just relaxing, being good. And so that is good. I think it's progress and I'm really proud of the cats. Here's Boo. He's been laying on the day sofa in his room. Let me tell you what I realized about Boo and Nancy. And that is, I think Nancy challenges Boo by, you know, rushing him and, you know, just seeing what his reaction will be. Because if Nancy, like, rushes up to Boo and he doesn't move, instead he growls and hisses and kind of, you know, holds his place, then Nancy's going to know that she can't boss him around that he's just going to stand firm and she can't boss him around. However, if she rushes Boo and then Boo runs away or backs up, then she knows that she can control Boo or she would have more power over Boo. So I think that's what Nancy's been doing. I think Nancy is testing Boo when she does that. And when she stares at him, I think, you know, she's trying to size him up. Right, Boo? Right, Boo? Also, I just checked the weather report. We're supposed to have, like, five straight days of rain. Like, we're not going to see sun for at least a week. Which, you know, I'm not happy with. But thankfully, there's no snow in the forecast. So that's good. I'm sitting next to Boo, and look who just showed up. It's Nancy. Boo's growling and hissing. He's taking a bath at the same time. I think Nancy has a crush on Boo.
Okay, let's go, Nancy. Let's go. You had enough of Boo today. You don't need to keep staring at him. Okay? Good? Boo's taking his bath. Come on, Nancy, let's go. Let's go, Nancy. Let's go, Nancy. I feel like she's a spring ready to, like, uncoil herself. Like she's just going to snap. But I'm literally sitting between them. Here's Boo. And here's Nancy. Nancy, what you doing? What are you doing, Nancy? You gonna stretch? You trying to look nonchalant? You trying to look like you're not up to no good? You gonna leave now? Okay, leave. I'll leave with you. Okay, Boo, I'll see you later. Good job, Nancy. It's 3.53 p.m. I just walked into their room and saw this. That's Ringo and Richard. Father and son, potentially. I still think Ringo's the daddy and Nancy's the mommy. Ringo was just crying. He was yowling. There was a cat outside. I don't know who it is. Is that Bob? I can't tell it's too dark. Is that Bob? It's 10.45 a.m. I'm trying to relax, eat a little breakfast, check some news online. I've had a hectic morning dealing with work drama since 8.30 a.m. I really just wanted to take a breather. Instead, Boo's been growling and hissing because look who's here. It's Nancy. She's sitting on this bench. So here's Nancy on the bench. And here's Boo. I think Nancy's in love with Boo, if you ask me. I think she's obsessed with him. As long as they don't fight, then I'm okay. But there's been a lot of growling and hissing. It's 10.52 a.m. Nancy's been meowing at Boo. Boo's been hissing and growling at her. Maybe they're gonna end up being good friends. I don't want to get involved where I don't need to get involved. Here's Nancy and Boo. It's like five minutes later. She's been meowing at Boo and he's been growling at her. I wish I knew what they were telling each other. Meanwhile, I'm trying to eat a leftover sandwich for breakfast and look at Simba. He was trying to eat it. You don't like eggplant parmesan heroes, Simba. It's 11.35 a.m. and here's Boo. He's in his room. Let me tell you what happened. So just when I thought, okay, maybe Nancy and Boo are starting to get along, I was sitting at my desk trying to get work done. And all of a sudden I heard a cat fight and I was like, what is going on? So I got up. And Nancy was here, and Boo was here behind the chair, and Boo was making just horrible 
angry cat noises. And I was like, what is going on? So I yelled at Nancy and she moved away. I then checked the security camera footage and what happened was Boo was laying here by the toy and Nancy was over here. And she decided that she was going to charge at Boo at full speed. So when Boo saw what she was doing, he ran behind the chair. And then she ran over there and the two of them were really angry at each other. And it wasn't like a fist fight, but it could have escalated into one. It's 5.54 p.m. and look at Stella. I just found her here in Boo's bed on the table underneath the money tree. Stella loves laying under trees, right, Stella? Maybe it reminds her of when she was living outside. You see me coming in? You want to look out the window? Okay, let me shut the light. When I shut the light, then you could look out the window, okay? You want to go in the cat tower? You could go in the cat tower. Boo's laying on the day sofa. It's 8.55 p.m. I gave the cats the crunchy tree with like four tablespoons of crunchies in it. And Ringo's really good at it. He's been getting the crunchies out of it, and then Eva and Nancy have been eating the crunchies. They've had this for they've had this for a few days now. I give it to them at night when Nancy cries for crunchies because I figure it makes them at least work for the crunchies. We really can only use these part of the year when it's not like ant season or anything. Although maybe we could use it during ant season if they eat all the crunchies that are in there and they don't let them sit. But the reason why we could use them now very easily is because if they don't eat all the crunchies in there, it's okay if the crunchies are, you know, in there for hours, they're not going to attract ants. Hey, Eva. Hey, Eva. Let's see if Ringo will do it again. He's really good at it. He gets a lot of crunchies out. Yeah, he's really smart. Now Nancy's eating dinner. That's what she does. Like, I'll put food out and she won't eat it right away. And then she'll connive me out of some crunchies and then she'll go back and eat the food. But it could also be that she doesn't eat right away because she just wants to make sure that everyone else has plenty of food. And then she'll go back and eat what's left. I'm glad Ringo's having a good time with the crunchy tree. <laughs> 